on behalf of rotary club of bombay sea coast innerville club of bombay sea coast president neeta mechandani rotaract president afshin rais i welcome you all for this public webinar on a very important topic glaucoma i warmly welcome our chief guest dg sunil mehra and chief coordinator of our district 3141 dr manish motwani and all the district dignitaries who are present today i warmly welcome our all co-host clubs to whom i would like to acknowledge bombay airport bombay juhu beach bombay kandivli bombay mid city bombay northwest malad bombay pawai bombay queen city bombay sea face bombay uptown bombay varli bombay borivli dahanu mumbai andheri mumbai bandra kurla complex mumbai borivli east mumbai brave hearts mumbai coastline mumbai dahisar mumbai elite mumbai genex mumbai goregao west harmony iconic mumbai jewels mumbai juhu mumbai kandivli west mumbai kalakar mumbai khar mumbai mulund south mumbai nariman point uh, uh, mumbai north island mumbai north end mumbai parleshwar mumbai queens necklace mumbai rising stars mumbai royals and mumbai south uh, mumbai south mumbai varsova mumbai western elite mumbai west end mumbai west coast palghar ullasnagar virat 44 clubs are co-hosting this event and i'm thankful to all the presidents and the clubs friends glaucoma is a silent sneaky killer of sight and it causes non reversible blindness in india there is a three fold increase in patients in last just 4 years it is a thirst area of our district 3141 i now request our medical director kunal kapadia to introduce our dg and further moderate the session kunal thank you president kishore hello everyone and welcome to rotary's webinar on the glaucoma sos save our sight before we begin a big shout out to my visionary president kishore masurkar my team medical committee members and my dear sea coasters thanks for this opportunity my name is kunal kapadia and i am a visionary but only in terms of my eyesight which is a 6 on 6 being a medical director md at sea coast after being a commerce student just shows how rotary provides opportunities to work in areas that one is passionate about the true visionary is our district governor that is the big boss rotarian sunil mehra who's been kind enough to drive us towards this awareness outreach let me introduce the superman dg to rotarians our district governor sunil mehra requires no introduction but since i am the boss today why should my club sea coast not flourish and earn some brownie points by introducing him actually today we have a large non rotarian audience so sunil a businessman engaged in the manufacturing and marketing of packaging products is also a keen sportsman he joined rotary in 1998 was president of his club in 2008 9 his international and district achievements are legendary highest amongst them being the rotary foundation district service award in 1415 and rotary international service above self award in 1516 this year as district governor he leads our district which extends from south mumbai to dahanu in the west and mulon and wada in the east and he has conceived many inspiring visionary and impactful projects as he lives up to the district and international themes of going beyond the ordinary as rotary opens opportunities he is truly a leader who knows the way goes the way and shows the way neil requesting you to inaugurate this glaucoma webinar with a few words please thank you uh, thank you so much kunal um, rest assured you have not just earned brownie points but you've taken the cake too <laughs> visionary president uh, kishor <clears throat> uh, chief coordinator dr manish motwani dr aban distinguished guests hello rotarians my dear visionary presidents who are also i think 44 odd co-hosting in this very meaningful webinar 
what team members, district officers, prepare their invited guests. And, uh, just to tell you, Vision 2020 was actually coined around the uh, point that when you have a perfect vision, it's called Vision 2020. So very meaningfully, particularly uh, here at this particular webinar. You know, I am really no authority on this aspect of medicine, but I do remember the problem my mother went through a good 45 years ago. She did lose 85% sight in her left eye. And Dr. Irani at Kemp's Corner, I remember clearly, could have, could have done as much as he could with all his ex rich experience. Though the medical field has taken multiple strides, still, as the statement says, Prevention is certainly better than cure. Currently, regular eye examination is the best form of prevention against significant glaucoma damage. Early detection and careful lifelong treatment can maintain vision in most people in general. I am given to understand that a check for glaucoma should be done minimum once in two years as age progresses even once a year. And I do remember being told after my mother's ailment, anyone with higher risks, like a family member, should be tested every year. Those at higher risks include, of course, with diabetes and people with a family history of glaucoma. You are definitely at an increased risk if you have a parent or a brother or a sister who has gone through it. Timely diagnosis and appropriate treatment are key to glaucoma prevention. Apparently, and I don't know if I'm perfect on, on this one, but there are no known ways of preventing glaucoma, blindness or significant vision loss. Can be prevented only if the disease is recognized in the early stages. Vision loss is silent, slow, and progressive. It typically affects, I think, the side vision or the peripheral vision as it progresses. A regular program of moderate exercises will benefit your overall health and studies have shown that moderate exercise such as walking or jogging three times or more every week can help in lowering the effect. It's very important to protect our eyes. Wearing protective eyewear is important when engaged in sports activities or home improvement projects. As I understand, eye injuries can result in traumatic glaucoma. So protecting your eyes from injury is another way to prevent it. I, before I end a small little anecdote, I remember playing under underarm cricket and the batsman hit the ball straight towards my eye. Thank God I had glasses then. The eye truly got saved. So an important and necessary topic, Aban, Dr. Aban. Congratulations, Kishore and the club for taking this for initiative. All the best. Thank you for inspiring us, Sunil. Really appreciate this. Guys, please do post your questions on this chat. And if you write good things about me, your questions are going to be selected. Okay. So let's start. Let's get started by firstly embarrassing my panelists. It was love at first sight when I met Dr. Aban a few years ago. Dr. Aban has been in private practice for the past 40 years. She was a lecturer at Nair Hospital for three years prior to that. She stood first in the MS and DOMS, don't ask me the full form, exams with gold medals and was an honorary consultant at Lotus Eye Hospital for 30 years. A passion besides ophthalmology, uh, poetry, Western music and reading. A Rotarian since 2000, she was past president of our club in 2009-10. She is married to Jahangir, who is a Xavierite, my schoolmate, and he is one amazing human being with a fab sense of humor. Dr. Mayov is married. Sorry, girls. Dr. Mayov is an alumnus of the prestigious Sankara Netralaya, Chennai, where he did his post-graduation and fellowship in glaucoma, followed by a consultant position in cataract and glaucoma for three years at SN Calcutta. He was awarded the best outgoing resident and anterior segment fellow in 2013 and 15, respectively. He's been working at Nucleus Eye and Skin Clinic in Santa Cruz for the past three years and is a glaucoma consultant at Lotus Eye Hospital, Juhu. He is passionate about scuba diving and cricket. Okay, let's get cracking. Our intent is to simplify and make you aware. So let's start with a Q&A. 
let's start with the q and a uh, starting with dr aban and then maya what is glaucoma and why is it important that we know something about it dr aban good morning friends thank you kunal for the kind introductions and thank you presidents kishore and neeta for giving us the opportunity to shed light on this eye disease called glaucoma which is appropriately called the sneak or silent killer of sight we are delighted to have our district governor sunil mehra and chief coordinator dr manish motwani with us today as glaucoma is one of our district thrust areas this year what is glaucoma glaucoma is a slowly progressive deteriorating damage of the optic nerve which is the nerve which connects the eye to the brain there are various factors responsible for this but the most important and treatable factor is the intraocular pressure of the eye or the pressure of the eyeball the normal range of eye pressure is between 10 and 21 mm of mercury anything above which is a risk factor for glaucoma we also know that glaucoma is called kala motia or kala pani in hindi kach bindu in marathi and jambar in gujarati and some people finally also refer to it as glycoma or glaucoma uh, so good morning everyone it is indeed a privilege for me today to be talking to all of you on a topic which is very close to my heart and that is glaucoma it is important that everyone should know something about the disease as the optic nerve damage caused by glaucoma causes an irreversible loss of a person's visual field or the peripheral vision followed by loss in central vision if it is untreated over a period of time the key word in this is irreversible so this is a very basic gross pictorial representation of what a patient with glaucoma goes through with this picture here showing a normal visual field early constriction of the visual field in mild disease followed by a little more constriction in moderate in moderate disease and in severe disease only a central island of vision remains so the reason of having this webinar and this talk today is to make everyone more aware and impart a little more information about the disease thanks dr mayav and dr aban what is the prevalence of glaucoma in the world and in india why is it such a big public health problem dr mayav so the numbers of glaucoma worldwide and in india are quite scary as of now in 2020 estimated 70 million cases of people have glaucoma estimated to increase to almost 100 million by 2040 it is the second most common cause of visual impairment after cataract refractive errors and as of now 5 million people are blind worldwide because of glaucoma and i repeat this is irreversible blindness in india the numbers are equally great where in 2020 we have almost 12 million cases estimated to increase to almost 20 million by 2040 india will handle one fifth of the total uh, global load of glaucoma and blindness in, in, in india has increased almost 3 to 4 times over the past 4 to 5 years and that is scary kunal and that's why it needs everyone's close attention agree completely doc So, uh, doc, who is at risk of developing glaucoma? Are all individuals equally susceptible in getting this disease? So, Kunal, um, everyone above the age of forty is at risk of developing the disease. Although it is seen in younger age groups and infants rarely, but in this webinar, we will focus on the more important public health problem, which is adult glaucoma. so as i said everyone can develop glaucoma but there are a few important risk factors which i would like to talk about the first and the most important of them which our dg has already spoken about is family history a parent sibling grandparent or any blood relative having glaucoma increases your risk of developing the disease 
by almost five times. And that's a big percentage increase. So it is, if there is somebody in your family suffering from glaucoma, it's a very important piece of information which you have to give to your treating eye doctor or your ophthalmologist because the moment he or she hears it, hears it the antenna go up and that person is that much more vigilant or you know, intently looking at your eyes to search for glaucoma. The second and the most, again, important risk factor is injudicious and long-term use of steroids. Now, steroids in any form, whether it is in the form of eye drops, tablets, skin ointments, lotions, or even inhalers can increase the eye pressure and can cause glaucoma. A simple example is one goes to a pharmacist or the chemist and says, my eye is red, give me something. The chemist invariably gives something which contains a steroid. The person puts it, gets immediate relief, is very happy, thinks, wow, this is a magic potion, and uses it whenever there's even a slight amount of redness or some slight irritation here and there. And that long-term use can increase the eye pressure and cause glaucoma. Even for uh, skin ointments, uh, creams which we use for allergies, the dermatologist gives it for a certain duration only. But at any point of time, once the duration is over, if there's slight itching, people tend to overuse these steroid ointments. That can get absorbed into the bloodstream and can again increase the eye pressure. So it's very important to use steroids only as per your treating physician's guidelines and follow it for that duration only. There are a few conditions like autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, etc., where people are on long-term steroid use. For them, a uh, regular eye checkup is very important, especially to check their eye pressures. The third and another important risk factor is a high eye number or a high refractive error. Anybody having a high or minus number, minus three, four, five, six, that is high myopia, or a high plus number, plus three, four, five, six, that is high, high hypermetropia for distance, come under risk factors for glaucoma. So although there are other factors like trauma as well, but these form a backbone and this is what I wanted to highlight today. Understood, Doc. Uh, so Dr. Aban and then probably Dr. Mayav, what are the signs and symptoms of glaucoma? Kunal, most unfortunately and sadly, most glaucomas are symptomless. You can read clearly, see clearly, watch TV clearly, Drive comfortably, see signboards on the road clearly, but still you could be having a deteriorative optic nerve and be having glaucoma. And that is why it is called the silent sneak thief of sight. In the depicted slide, you can see that it's easier to attack a sleeping person than someone who is awake or vigilant. Uh, yeah, Kunal, as Dr. Aban pointed out, the disease is asymptomatic or symptomless in the early parts of the disease simply because it affects the visual field or the peripheral vision first and the central vision later. In a study conducted in urban Chennai, almost 90% of people diagnosed had no idea about glaucoma when they were diagnosed. They had no awareness about the disease as well. This is the state in urban Chennai which has relatively high literacy rates. You go, you go to other backward rural parts of the country where education awareness is less. Uh, the amount of knowledge of glaucoma is extremely low. However, there can be a few symptoms as well. Sometimes chronic eye pain, chronic headache, uh, seeing colored halos around a source of light can be early symptoms of glaucoma. A very intelligent person while driving, etc., may feel that his extreme periphery vision is slightly less, especially when a car comes into his field of vision. These can be early signs of glaucoma, but in a majority of cases, it is asymptomatic or symptomless. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Mayav, are there any types of glaucoma or all of us suffer from the same type of glaucoma? So Kunal, this is a very interesting question. Uh, basically, the adult glaucomas which we are talking about here are of two types. The open angle glaucomas and the narrow angle or closed angle glaucomas. What do I mean by angle? Angle is uh, the drainage pathway within the eye 
which takes the internal fluid of the eye or the aqueous humor from inside to outside. I repeat, the fluid within the eyeball, not the external fluid or the tears. So in an open angle, the way it is shown in the photo on the left here, although this angle is open, because of ultra-structural issues within the angle itself, the fluid cannot pass through easily from inside to outside, therefore causing its accumulation within the eye, increasing the eye pressure and causing glaucoma. If you compare this to our regular monsoon scene in Bombay and our storm water or rain water drains on the roads, although the surface of the drain on the road may be open, within the drain itself, there may be dirt, sewage, plastic, filth, etc., which block the drain and do not allow this fluid to pass easily across, causing its accumulation and flooding on the road. This is something similar. Now, in the narrow angle or closed angle variety, the opening of this angle or the drainage pathway itself is narrow or blocked because of certain anatomical changes in the eye. So if the opening itself is narrow, it's going to be difficult for the fluid to pass across. If we compare this again to our rainwater systems in Bombay, if the opening itself is covered by a slab or a stone or let's say a tree or leaves, how is the water going to pass through? It is going to accumulate. So worldwide, open angle glaucoma is more prevalent than the narrow angle or closed angle variety, where it is seen in almost two thirds of the cases compared to one third of the narrow angle. But important and interesting to note is that in India, South Asia, Southeast Asian countries, open angle and narrow angle glaucoma are equally prevalent. So we have to keep a watch, a close watch on both of them as treating doctors or ophthalmologists when we are examining patients. All right. So after hearing this, Dr. Maya, if someone wants to get themselves evaluated for, glau for glaucoma, what are the steps? So uh, Kunal, I'm very, again, very emphatic about this answer. Yearly checkup after the age of 40 is the most important. You know, many times uh, I we have patients who, you know, we've, we've seen probably three, four years earlier and they come back to us now and we ask them that, why have you not come? They are like, no, everything was fine. So I did not need to come. You know, uh, I ask them the question that they have cars, they have multiple cars. I'm sure they send them for servicing twice, thrice a year, get the oil filter check, get this petrol filter check, get this, that check. Why not show the same concern for your own eyes, which are in fact invaluable, precious, and they require close checkup and follow-up as well. So a comprehensive and complete eye examination after the age of 40 is very important, which not only includes the vision uh, and the glass number or a refractive error checkup, it also involves a checkup of the eye on the slit lamp, which is shown in this photo here followed by the intraocular pressure or the eye pressure measurement by an instrument called as the Goldman Applination Tonometer, which is the gold standard for measuring the eye pressure. As uh, mentioned by Dr. Aban earlier, anything above 21 millimeter of mercury is suspicious for glaucoma. In camps and for other screening purposes, non-contact tonometers or air puff tonometers can also be used. The next is assessment of the angle, which I mentioned earlier, by a process called as gonioscopy. And last is examination of the optic nerve to look for its structure, to see if there's any thinning, etc., using specialized lenses. With this basic examination in the OPD itself, the ophthalmologist gets a good enough idea as to what is going on within your eyes. If pressures are fine, nerves are healthy, Fine, from glaucoma point of view, you've got a tick this time. See you back after one year. But if the pressures are borderline, borderline high, if the nerve is suspicious, then we go to the next investigation, which is basically called as perimetry, which uh, measures the visual field, which is the first to be damaged in glaucoma. And the instrument to measure the perimetry is called as a perimeter, which is shown in this photograph here. So very quickly, I just show you how the perimetry printouts in a normal individual look. This is of the right eye and this is of the left eye with all these white areas showing an absolutely normal visual field. 
as you can see here, 100%. That is 100% of your visual feed is intact. But. All right. So, um, so this how? is a patient of mild glaucoma, where you can see here these black patches or black areas are damaged because of glaucoma. This is, we've caught it early with almost 90% of the visual field still intact, but this damage is permanent irreversible. Our next slide is a patient of moderate glaucoma, where you can see here almost the complete superior field or the above upper field of this patient has been damaged because of glaucoma with almost 50% of visual field loss already. And this third picture is of a patient having severe glaucoma. You can see all these black patches here all have been damaged because of glaucoma. And I repeat, this is irreversible damage. The patient is looking through this central white area only. Important to note and interesting to note, Kuna, this particular severe glaucoma perimetry is of, is of a 47 or a 48-year-old gentleman who just came in for a regular eye checkup. He just said, everything is fine. I just need my glasses. I saw the nerve, saw it looks, it looks definitely glaucomatous, did the visual feed, and lo, behold, this is the visual feed at presentation. When I showed this to the gentleman, he was shocked. Okay, this is what it is, but that's the truth of the matter. Thankfully, for the past two years on treatment, he has been stable. But now he's become more aware of the disease. He tells us that when he's driving on the highway, etc., a car coming from the extreme right, his son who sits next to him tells him earlier, hey, Papa, there's a car coming on the right and he sees it a little later. So this is important because he's made certain changes in his lifestyle. Like he's avoiding high-speed driving, avoiding highway driving at night, etc. to keep himself and his family safe which is important. Now, apart from the perimetry, which I've shown here, you have investigations like the OCT as well, which help us in understanding the structure of the nerve and to see if there's any thinning or anything of that sort. So these basic tests and the perimetry form our armamentarium as ophthalmologists for glaucoma diagnosis as well as management. Awesome, Doc. Thanks so much. So again, how is glaucoma treated, Doc? Is there a cure? Um, so the mainstay and the first line of treatment of glaucoma is eye drops or glaucoma drops to control the eye pressure. However, important to note here, Kuna, that treatment is, is to ensure that if we catch the disease early, like the moderate perimetry, which I showed earlier, is to prevent any further loss. But if we catch the disease at moderate or severe stages of the disease, we cannot reverse any of the damage that has occurred. But our aim of treatment is to ensure new damage does not occur and there is no worsening of the existing damage. So all these drops I've shown here has, have a specific schedule, a, a specific dosage, a correct way of putting the drop, which we educate not only the patients, but their attenders and relatives as well, because they also have to monitor whether the drops, etc. are going properly or not. Few of these glaucoma drops are quite expensive as well. Here, I would like to highlight that in patients who have a narrow angle, doing a simple, inexpensive, short, clinic or OPD based laser procedure, this laser which I have shown, called as a YAG laser iridotomy, can open up this narrow angle and can ensure proper circulation of the fluid within the eye. By this, we definitely reduce the chances of that person developing glaucoma in the future. They may never have glaucoma in their life. They may never need medications in their life by the simple laser, provided it is caught early and it is done early. In advanced cases, surgeries, shunts are also used to control the eye pressures. But I repeat, no surgery can prevent any of the damage caused. Now, humorously and funnily, I'd just like to point out here, Alcohol and marijuana have been shown to reduce the eye pressure. But in these times, and in any time, no doctor, ophthalmologist, or me will recommend these at all. It's just to be a little funny at this point of time. And please don't pass this message by WhatsApp to anybody right now, please. So in the treatment of glaucoma, you have to understand that the patient, it is a lifelong disease. 
like how you have diabetes hypertension the treatment and follow up of glaucoma is lifelong the patient is an equal partner along with the ophthalmologist in his or her treatment journey and plays a very important role great uh, thanks dr mayer now uh, is there anything that we can do to prevent glaucoma on an individual basis some exercises some home care remedies etc so uh, kunal i am very emphatic and very clear about this answer that nothing one can do sitting at home can prevent glaucoma if it is going to happen it is going to happen but people tell us no i do you know all these sorts of eye exercises regularly or vision yoga or yoga for the eye or all these you know sorts of things no that is not going to prevent glaucoma the only thing which can prevent glaucoma is coming for an eye check up regularly every year getting your pressures and your eye evaluated and that's the way forward i repeat nothing you can do at home can prevent glaucoma a check up with a ophthalmologist is the only answer thanks doc uh, so dr aban as rotarians what can we do as glaucoma is a thrust area this year the first thing we can do as rotarians is to spread awareness everywhere and anywhere like this webinar in the electronic media in the print media in different languages when celebrities have talked about their glaucoma tremendous awareness worldwide has been generated about the disease alan ray the famous sportsman famously says although glaucoma took away my bat and one eye sees a dark cloud the sun streams brightly through the other eye Whoopi Goldberg, the actress of Color, and Bono, the lead singer from the band U2, have talked about their tests and treatments for glaucoma. And of course, my favorite Italian heartthrob, Andrea Bocelli, the operatic tenor, who was blind from glaucoma at a very young age. In our district. the director of project mission vision padma shri professor dr keki mehta who has painted the canvas of ophthalmology nationally and internationally in vivid colors has many plans if mr covid and miss corona retreat by december he is planning three major glaucoma screening camps throughout the district in january 21 ending with a mega cycle rally on 31st january for glaucoma awareness we can also do glaucoma screening as part of all eye camps diabetes camps and medical checkup camps too in fact one in one of our clubs glaucoma screening camps a, year, a few years ago a senior rotarian's wife was diagnosed with glaucoma early glaucoma for the first time our club through our president kishore's company will be donating glaucoma drops worth rupees 2 lakhs to needy patients this year and our club will also be supporting glaucoma surgeries for poor patients and now our dashing and dynamic bright and brilliant industrious and innovative chief coordinator Dr Manish Motwani a weight loss surgeon who has a plan for our district thrust area would like to say a few words over to you Manish yeah can i have my video on please yeah hi uh, kishore what a lovely initiative and dr aban and dr maya what a lovely great initiative glaucoma is one of the major concerns of the eye today and uh, we know so many people are losing eyesight and this seminar i was listening to every word of it and it was so informative so informative this itself shows how much you all have been working on this day in and day out and as we all know that in glaucoma you can't cure it but yes you can prevent it and this type of effort is really noteworthy uh, 
Friends, Rotary Club of Mulund Hillview has been doing uh, cataract surgery camps through years and years, around 500 to 600 a year. Uh, and we've been asking people to send patients and we will operate them because we this is a round the year camp. Uh, but we thought we should do something else and uh, was in touch with DG Sunil and spoke to Aban and was in touch with Dr. Keki also that glaucoma is our thrust area project. What do we do? So friends, uh, my club, Rotary Club of Mulund Hillview, with support from uh, my very own Motwani Charitable Trust, is launching an ophthalm checkup ambulance that is a van, uh, which will have all the recent diagnostic modes for complete eye checkup. And Mayav, I'll be speaking to you also about it. Dr. Aban, we'll be taking your inputs too because it is almost in the final stages. What are the latest statement that we want to put up? And this will be available to each and every club of District 3141 to carry out their checkup camps. Rather than people coming to us, we will now be able to go to the people, do a camp there. It will be having, uh, we'll have the required doctors, we'll have the required equipment, everything. And I feel, uh, especially for diseases like glaucoma, where we don't want them to come to us in the late stages, like Maya clearly told about that 47-year-old gentleman who came for a regular eye checkup. And we found that uh, this person who has was come for a regular eye checkup has come with almost uh, 70, 80, 90% uh, decreased vision. 75%. So we don't want people to come into this. Even for those checkups, we'll have regular camps. And this uh, van will be used by each and every utilized by each and every club of district 3141. I think so this would be a small step towards our thrust area project of uh, glaucoma care. So compliments to each one of you all and compliments to DG Sunil for taking up such a lovely project. And uh, let's see each and every club can contribute somewhere or other to ensure that we can take care of this glaucoma blindness at least. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Aban, before we take any questions from the audience, any final take-home message from your side, please? Yes. To repeat, glaucoma is a sneaky and silent killer of sight. A regular comprehensive eye checkup is a must for all above the age of 40. It should be detected early to save our sight. Hello, if huh? you have a family history, be very, very mm -hmm. watchful as you are more than five to ten times more prone. Uh, very really important. Narrow angle glaucoma mm -hmm. can be prevented yeah, yeah. by a simple, inexpensive, short laser procedure if your eye doctor or glaucoma specialist detects a narrow angle in your eye. And so to conclude, it's early detection, early detection, early detection. If detected, regular follow-up, regular follow-up, regular follow-up. Thank you, doctors. Aapne hamari aake khol di. Now, get on to the questions from the audience. Uh, we had one question right uh, in the morning. So I'll take that first. Uh, this is from Mr. M. Velayudan. My dear Dr. Aban and Mayav, uh, I wish to confirm that I will be. I will. I have been suffering from glaucoma for the past twenty years, and currently my vision is extremely poor. Legally, I'm classified as blind. I'm seventy-five years old. Is glaucoma related to diabetes and hypertension? Okay, and uh, you know, since I started on glaucoma drops surgery on two occasions, I've been maintaining my ocular pressure at eighteen and below. Uh, you know. Earlier, my ocular pressure was between 13 and 14. My vision is slowly and steadily deteriorating. Is there any hope of regaining my vision? Sorry, a long question, but a quick answer to that, please. Dr. Aban? I think Mayav should take that. Okay, Mayav. Yeah, so actually, uh, diabetes and hypertension is not really correlate, does not really correlate with glaucoma. Multiple studies have shown us varying uh, associations of the same. And it's not necessary that if you're diabetic, hypertensive, you're more prone to develop glaucoma. So that is uh, number one. Number two, uh, Mr. Velayudam, um, glaucoma is a slowly progressive deteriorative damage. Uh, controlling your pressures is one of the only things which as glaucoma surgeons, as ophthalmologists, we have in our armamentarium. So if drugs and surgeries have been done, 
and your pressures are as of now as you say 11 12 uh, that is uh, the maximum which uh, an eye doctor at present can do it's a sad story but that's the way it is because uh, as you age more there is age relative degenerative age related degenerative damage also which takes place and also as you age there are other systemic risk factors uh, ca- cardiovascular risk factors sometimes uh, the blood supply to your nerve also reduces all these also can increase the damage to the nerve irrespective of what your eye pressure is but to, there are certain tools at this point of time which you can adopt if it's possible example reading newspaper with small print is difficult but if you shift to kindle or any device but you can increase the font size change your contrast have black words on a white background this this will help you at least for big letters for you to be able to uh, read and definitely you'll be able to uh, sign comfortably uh, but uh, since glaucoma is a degenerative disease regeneration of the optic nerve is something which is still very much in its infancy and it's still in um, research phases so for it to become clinically applicable we are still far away from that just go get your eye pressures checked go to your eye doctor regularly and that's the only thing which you which you can do and be positive stay positive that is very important don't get dejected don't get negative stay positive and stay happy that is very important thank you dr mayav all the best mr velayudan uh, dr mayav can one have glaucoma if the eye pressure is normal uh if the eye pressure is normal uh yes there is an entity called as normal pressure or low uh, normal tension glaucoma or low pressure glaucoma but even though the measured uh 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 eye eye pressure is in the normal range yet a person has damage this is usually seen in the later age groups again where uh, a person systemic uh, risk factors increase cardiovascular problems increase uh, the carotid arteries which supply the blood to the brain develop narrowing because of age related changes that reduces the blood supply to the optic nerve and can cause damage so definitely it is there but you can have normal tension glaucoma but that's less common as compared to the glauco- glaucoma which i have spoken about earlier understood doc so for glaucoma patients are there any do's and don'ts apart from using medications correctly dr mayer Uh, so for glaucoma patients uh, going to the doctor for, as for the checkup as prescribed by him or her uh, using the medications properly this forms the cornerstone but there are a few other things which we usually inform our patients who have glaucoma and one of them is that to avoid drinking too much water or too much fluid at one point of time what i mean is a lot of people have the habit of getting up in the morning and having a liter a liter and a half two liters of water to detox themselves and all this that is something which you want to avoid you can have the total intake of water throughout the day of 3 to 4 liters but avoid drinking too much at one point of time because that has been shown to transiently increase the eye pressure and can increase the damage the second thing which is again important is we ask them to avoid any major breath holding exercises you know a lot of these sort of exercises transiently again reduce the blood supply to the optic nerve and can cause and uh, can can cause uh, additional damage to the pressure damage as well a uh, regular walking jogging is absolutely fine uh, and uh, live a regular healthy lifestyle and being positive very important is to be positive you are constantly under the burden of glaucoma you are under stress there's in uh, endogenous steroids also which are released in your body Uh, which is not good for you so you need to relax have faith in your ophthalmologist follow his treatment properly and uh, leave the glaucoma up to him point noted dr mayav uh, dr aban is there any other silent killer of the eye besides glaucoma oh that's uh, that's a wonderful question and kudos to the questioner kunal yes the other silent killer of the eye is diabetes diabetic damage or diabetic retinopathy again has no symptoms or signs in the initial stages a patient may be perfectly happy with his vision and his retina can even be damaged to the extent of 70 to 80% so the message to all diabetics at whatever age have a yearly checkup and if your eye doctor detects minimal damage 
a moderate damage, then as frequently as he wants to see you, maybe three monthly or six monthly. Right. Uh, thanks, Doc. Uh, Dr. Mayer, do glaucoma drops have any side effects? It's That's a question from the audience. So, uh, Kunal, there is no medicine, there is no drop, there is no surgery which has no side effect. Every effect of a drop or a particular medical intervention has some side effects and we have to manage those side effects. The most important thing which glaucoma drops do is to control the eye pressure and that is the most important effect we are looking at. Sometimes associated with the glaucoma drops, there can be a little bit of dryness, redness, ocular surface dis discomfort and sometimes eye allergies as well. So usually along with glaucoma drops, we do prescribe lubricating uh, or, you know, uh, uh, lubricating eye drops, which add moistness and freshness to the eye surface to keep it as fresh as possible. Uh, so yeah, so there are a few side effects, but we can manage them. In case there's an allergy, we usually shift from one class of anti-glaucoma drops to another class. Fair enough, Dr. Mayav. A follow-on probably from the earlier question, is laser treatment safe? A laser treatment for what? Uh, there are different laser treatments in the eye. Number one, you can undergo laser treatment to correct your eye, your refractive error, your eye number. You can undergo laser treatment in the eye to manage your cataracts. You, have, you can undergo laser treatment in the eye for retinal issues. And you can undergo laser treatment in your eye for the glaucoma laser, which I've mentioned about earlier, or the YAG laser iridotomy. Yes, the YAG laser iridotomy is absolutely safe. It is basically a three to four minute procedure only. Once you've been diagnosed with a narrow angle, it is done in the OPD only. There are no major side effects. You may have a little bit of pain, a little bit of blurring of vision for a few hours. We give you a few drops and you're absolutely fine with that. So yes, it is absolutely safe. And if it is required, the glaucoma laser, if it is required in your eye, it should be done. There is no, There should be no two questions or ambiguity about it. Understood, Doc. And... Another question from the audience is what makes this eye pressure increase? I mean, how best do you avoid it? Is there actually a way to avoid it? As I told you, it depends on the structures within the eye. There are a few risk factors which increase the chances of one developing glaucoma. Uh, like as of now, I don't know whether I will be hypertensive few years down the line. And I really can't do much to control it because I have a family history for hypertension. All I can do is keep getting my BP checked. If everything is fine, keep going ahead. Similar with glaucoma. You may have risk factors. If you have risk factors, you're more likely to develop damage. But it could happen to anybody as well. So as I said, there's nothing which one can do at home to prevent it. All you can do is keep going to your eye doctor for a checkup. And if everything is okay, you come back next year. But no home remedies or anything of that sort at all. Understood, doc. So, uh, you know, maybe this is a progressive medicine. So someone's asked a question, can we use artificial intelligence to detect it? And if yes, what is the cost? So, yeah, artificial intelligence um, is being used in a lot of areas in ophthalmology for screening purposes. It is being used heavily for diabetic retinopathy, especially uh, because a doctor going into a village, which has maybe 1,000, 2,000 people, checking everybody's eyes may be difficult. But having them sit on the machine and the machine actually quantifying, looking at their retina, whether this is a diabetic retinopathy, is it not, is it, not, is it a suspect, sort of reduces the burden on, on, the, on, the, on, on the doctors and the medical infrastructure. So similar can be used for glaucoma as well. But I repeat, any sort of artificial intelligence technology is only used for screening purposes. Any decision making, any major therapeutic decisions are done on the basis of hard evidence which we have which we see clinically or with the investigations which I have told about earlier. Understood. Uh, does, okay, another question from the audience. Does keto diet plus intermittent fasting help glaucoma? So keto diet, intermittent fasting may help in reducing your weight, may not help in reducing your weight, may increase your weight, may decrease your weight. I don't know. But I know for a fact, it is not going to reduce your eye pressure or not going to increase your eye pressure. So doing all this to prevent glaucoma may not be the right thing. Doing it for anybody, for anything else, it's up to the person and whoever it is. But from the eye point of view, no keto diet, nothing is going to help. Fair enough. Uh, 
any connection between detachment of retina and glaucoma or between cataract and glaucoma so uh the eye is a small structure but they have multiple substructures within so you can have glaucoma but you can have a retinal detachment as well where your retina uh, you know tears away from its uh, source both may coexist but more necessarily both don't uh, are a cause for each other similarly cataract and glaucoma you may have glaucoma cataract is an age related process so as you age the cataract will increase understood uh is it true that glaucoma is more prevalent in diabetics so as i said earlier uh, the jury is still out on this there is no conclusive damage that diabetes or hypertension increases the risk of one developing glaucoma not really not something we are convinced by uh, but an important point i want to make as far as diabetes is concerned let's say a person has uncontrolled diabetes and along with that he has uncontrolled diabetic retinopathy he develops new vessels in his eye which are called as neovascularization and those new vessels in the eye can cause a very high eye pressure which is called as neovascular glaucoma <laughs> so that is a sequelae of uncontrolled diabetic retinopathy which is not uh, what i'm talking about on a public health perspective if let's say somebody has controlled diabetes it's not really going to uh, or and the retina is absolutely fine the chances for developing glaucoma may not necessarily increase or decrease but if his diabetes is uncontrolled with bleeding in the eye because of diabetes new vessels in the eye that causes a secondary glaucoma which is called as neovascular glaucoma understood doc another question is i am a glaucoma patient does hypoxia aggravate glaucoma um so uh more than hypoxia it is what we call as nocturnal hypotension so if your bp has a tendency of falling in the night that is something which affects your the retinal the blood supply to the optic nerve so that's why patients who are on glaucoma we usually tell them to avoid a nighttime anti hypertensive medication so as to avoid the blood pressure coming down in the night so nocturnal hypotension is an important risk factor uh, but hypoxia itself uh, is not really that important anyways in normal situations we are not really hypoxic a normal mask which you wear in covid times really doesn't produce any hypoxia unless you've taped it all around and you've been exercising for half an hour that is something which uh, can produce it but in regular normal circumstances not really no. all right uh another question is i have been detected with glaucoma when i went for a bp checkup 5 years ago i am stage 2 in both eyes have family history my drops have increased from 1 to 3 drops uh, he, you know some various names have been taken yes. i don't want surgery are there any op- other options of controlling this or managing this condition so the in this condition we use the drops uh, to the extent possible maybe 2 3 4 drops as well uh but there's a certain extent to which the drops can act if the dro- if the pressure is high even when so many drops are being used that means it's an intractable it's quite a severe glaucoma in such circumstances uh, lasers also may not really work and you may have no option but to undergo surgery if your glaucoma or your pressures are not being controlled by maximally tolerated medical therapy what we call so in case we are from glaucoma point of view from ophthalmologist point of view we will try maximum with drops but even if with maximum drops your pressures are not controlled or your glaucoma is still not under control we really don't have any major option apart from apart from the glaucoma surgery or a typical activity it's similar to a person who has heart issues you may try a stent you may use drops but if the blockage goes beyond a certain amount then you have to undergo a bypass surgery this is something similar understood uh doc another question from the audience uh, obviously i'm not rationalizing it in my head so i'm just blurting it out as it comes what is the best way to put drops uh, uh so uh, this is actually we have multiple videos we show our drops as well the most important thing that the patient has to be looking up the lower eyelid has to be pulled down and in the well which is created there a single drop has to be put from a little distance from the eyelid so just like this and a drop from here without touching the surface of the eye or anything of that sort 
and one drop is enough to occupy the space in the eye. It's not that if you put two, three, four, five drops, the effect will be more. In fact, everything will come out, and whatever was supposed to go also will not go. So the eye and the dropper has enough capacity for one eye drop, and that is what is required for any drop, whether it is an antibiotic drop, a lubricating eye drop, a glaucoma drop, any drop in the eye. One drop is enough. Anything more is an overfill or an overkill. Right. Uh, thank you, doctors. Like I said before, you have opened our eyes, and that holds true. Uh, I'd like, I'd like to now hand it over to Rotarian Reshma Nichani. who is a sea coaster and heads human resources for india's largest pr firm i'm proud to also say that she is a member of my team medical committee at rotary club of bombay sea coast over to you reshma for the vote of thanks thanks so much kunal so you know our ancestors have always said no duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks so i am delighted to have been given this pleasant duty of delivering the vote of thanks this afternoon eyes are the windows through which we see the world thank you dr aban and dr maya for an enlightening presentation on glaucoma which if not detected quickly can shut these windows for us and that too permanently we truly appreciate having this mysterious sneak thief of vision called glaucoma clarified for us your words of caution that no amount of exercises yoga or home remedies will work and the fact that glaucoma is asymptomatic attacking us even when we are sleeping are big revelations to me the way this topic has been dealt with and explained in simple terms is indeed exemplary as no program can be successful with a single person i would like to take this opportunity to thank district governor sunil mehra and chief coordinator dr manish motwani presidents kishore Masurkar of Rotary Club of Bombay Sea Coast and Neeta Meer Chandani of Inner Wheel Club of Bombay Sea Coast, past district governors and district officials from our club and the district, other co-host clubs and their presidents, Rotaract Club of Lotus College of Optometry, the Entod Pharma team and the technical team, the entire Sea Coast family, especially past presidents Ashok Mehra, Ram Kotak, Hemang Jangla, Arya Ori, Secretary Sapna Priyadarshi. and above all past president virendra vij for their untiring efforts our speakers dr aban and dr mayav thank you our charming and cheeky moderator kunal and above all our audience from here and afar thank you once again for being with us today and hope it's been a great learning experience for you as it has been for me good day and have a wonderful thank you Thank yeah thank you yeah thank you everyone and we are having more than 1500 people watching us now i thank all of you thank you so much thank you and <laughs>